In today's video, we're taking a look at a motherboard that I found while shopping at Savers. So in Savers, I'm walking around and I look up at the glass case at the front and I spot this box. It says ABIT on it. The price tag says $20, but on the day I was there, all orange tags were half off. So it's only 10 bucks. So you can see ABIT won a whole bunch of awards, so this must be a good motherboard, right? So let's uh, take a look at what we got. Okay, so what does 10 bucks at a thrift store get you? Let's open it up and find out. Inside our motherboard is a nice anti-static bag. So let's open that up, get the board out. There we go. This board actually looks pretty clean. wonder if it's ever been used before. So interestingly, it looks like the CPU socket, well, it's not a socket, it's a slot. So this here can either be slot 1 or slot A. Slot 1 being Intel, used for Pentium 2 or 3 or even Celerons, or slot A used for AMD Athlons, also called AMD K7s. One way to tell is the side on the, of the notch on the, on the slot. If the notch is on this side here, that means it's slot A, or if the notch is on the other side, that means it's slot 1. This was done because both Intel and AMD, both slot A and slot 1, were the same physically the same piece here, but they were not electrically the same, so you could not put one CPU into the other board. So to fix that, you know, they just flipped the socket around. Also, other ways to tell, uh, at least on this board, it actually says friggin' slot A right there on the board. And also, this has an A and B chipset on it, so it's pretty obviously meant for an AMD CPU. This board also seems to have one, two, three, four, five PCI slots, and I assume it's an ADP slot. Looks like I need to pop in another BIOS battery, and yeah, I guess we could find out whether this works. But now, let's see what else we have in our box. Looks like we have an IDE cable, another IDE cable. Ooh, this is useful. A floppy cable that has both the edge connector for five and a quarter inch floppies and the normal connector for three and a half inch floppies. Some a bit driver discs. I looked up before what these discs are for, and these discs are for a RAID controller that should be on the a bit motherboard. Some a bit drivers. What looks like a temperature probe, maybe? For like CPU cooler or something. I'm not sure. A bunch of screws for, I guess, screwing the motherboard down or not sure what else for. And this thing, which I think is for the, to hold the CPU cooler on or something like that. Not sure what this piece is for. We'll find that out when we put the board together. Okay, so a few things about this motherboard. When researching the board, I looked up ABIT and I looked up the model number that was on the floppy disks. So I knew those floppy disks were RAID controllers, so I was like, oh boy, cool. This board's got a RAID controller on it. But curiously, this board only has two IE ports on it, so I'm wondering how that could really be a RAID controller with only that many IDE ports. So I looked up a picture of the ABIT motherboard those floppy disks were for, and it looks nothing like this board. This board is not the board that goes in that box. This board is not the board that goes with those floppy disks or those CDs. So, I don't actually know what type of board this is. This clearly is an AMD slot A board, but it's clearly not the board that was in that box. I did do some research and I did figure out what type of board this is. What I figured out was this board actually came from a gateway computer. So I wonder if a person had a gateway computer with this board in it and for some reason took this board out of the gateway and put in that ABIT board instead. So that makes me wonder if this board even works. Like, why was there a gateway board in a box for a different motherboard? Like, does this work? Does this not? Like, did they just upgrade this to a different board? Does this one not work at all? Like, I guess we'll find out. I'm going to go ahead and throw this on the test bench and... I guess we'll plug it in and we'll see what happens. Okay, before getting this board on the test bench, there are still a few things I need to uh, to work out. So, around the CPU socket, see there's 
these four holes here. So I wasn't sure what that was for when I first got this board. So looking at other pictures of slot A boards, even some slot 1 boards, I realized there's a special mounting mechanism that's supposed to go in there, and that would be this. I found this on eBay. It actually was listed as being for slot 1, but seeing as slot A and slot 1 are basically identical, this should work on either one. The only difference in this might be the direction I put it on, because these little notches here. So you need to make sure the notches are facing in the right direction for the CPU. So speaking of which, the CPU is a slot A CPU. This I picked up on eBay from someone actually in the same town as me. I didn't realize that when I ordered it. I wonder if I could just pick it up from him instead of having him ship it to me. But anyway, this is an AMD Athlon or an AMD K7. You might notice the handwriting there, it says 750. It's because the CPU is originally clocked at 650 megahertz, but the person I bought this from overclocked it to 750 megahertz. So on a lot of these CPUs, there was a little spot up here where you could connect a special device. Like a little little card edge, sort of like an SLI connector. You connect a special device to change some of the CPU settings to overclock it. Apparently whoever had the CPU did some modifications like that inside the CPU itself. So this appears to the system as a 750 megahertz CPU instead of 650. So as you can see, Inside here is a little connector. Turn around, we line it up with here, and this just basically slots in like that. Except this might sort of wobble around a bit, so that's what this is for. So as you can see on the CPU, there's a little notch, a little tab here. And we have to turn this when we install it, so that way it faces the correct direction. I'm gonna pull the CPU out real quick. And then place this on top of the socket, like that. Well, maybe. I want to go down all the way. What well, is stopping it? it? Must be stuck on something. And I don't know what. Okay, so may have a bit of a problem here. Like I said, when I bought this little plastic bracket, I assume that both slot A and slot 1 would have been fine. All I have to do is just flip it around because these little notches need to be on one side or the other. But the problem is, on the bottom of this, you'll notice a little notch cut out of the plastic. A little notch cut out of the plastic on the top there. And on the other side, there isn't that notch. And on the motherboard, there is a teeny little tab here on the CPU socket. That'd be why this little piece wouldn't go down. So now I need to figure something out. So I put this on and line up the notch and everything. It slides on in. And I put the CPU in. It also slides on in. But it doesn't clip into the plastic bracket properly because, well, I mean, it fits, but like the little tabs are supposed to poke through a little notch there to like hold it in place. So I guess I can just leave it like that and not have these clip in properly. Or I have to somehow either modify the socket or modify the bracket to deal with that. I think it's probably okay to just have the CPU in there like that. It doesn't need to be completely like clipped in. So I flip it around, you'll notice that when I slide the CPU in, it will clip into the plastic bracket, you know, and actually hold itself in there. But otherwise, it should be fine, so... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the best solution here is. Might be easy enough just to cut a little notch in this plastic piece here and just do that, so... I'll see. Okay, solution time. I took this, and I just sort of really badly cut a little notch in it. I probably should have used like a Dremel or something, but I used some tin snips and some pliers and, you know, cut a little notch in the plastic. I figured that was easier than trying to cut off a little notch in the socket. I'd rather destroy a little piece of plastic than the motherboard itself. So after doing that, now this 
fits on just fine and is facing the right direction. So, now we take these little clips that came with it and we put them in the motherboard underneath the little socket holder. Like that. And we tighten the screws on the socket holder into that. Just pull it in there. Go. So yeah, I guess I had to, you know, cut the socket holder and you know get it to fit in here, but at the end of the day, it works. It's just a little piece of plastic meant to hold the CPU from going anywhere. So I don't really see any problem just cutting a little hole in it and holding it steady. So yeah, that's not going anywhere. And I mean, if you look real close, you can see, you know, that I cut open the little socket holder there, but otherwise it's it's good enough. It's fine. So this piece looks like it connects here and presumably clips onto either the CPU or to the cooler, so I'm going to take that off for now and I'll worry about that after I worry about this CPU cooler. This I found on eBay along with the processor and the CPU retention bracket there. I don't know how powerful the cooler is. Hopefully it's powerful enough to cool down a 650 MHz CPU overclocked to 750. But anyway, so here's our little CPU cooler. This is for both socket one, uh, I mean slot one and slot A processors. There's a little thermal pad on the back which I'm probably going to replace and this basically just clips on to the back of the CPU using these clips. So yeah, I'm first going to replace this thermal pad with a new one and then I'll put it on the CPU. Okay, so we've got our old thermal pad off of the cooler. The old one was a little hard to get off even with just alcohol. I had to like scrape it off a bit. Anyway, I got a new piece of thermal pad and I have our cooler. So now let's put the two together. We just line the clips up that and then pull once it is end up it is pull down this lock it on there and yeah all right now it looks like that's on there so now we slide this whole thing in to our CPU retention bracket should hopefully still work even after I modified it And just slide that down and it actually clips in. There we go. And then this plugs into well, this is aux fan. There might be another one for CPU fan. Power supply fan. Okay, well this is plug into aux fan for now. So I do wonder where this goes. I imagine maybe it was to go under the heat sink or something, but maybe it's to go under the heat sink if your heat sink is too big? I guess my heat sink isn't big enough to warrant this extra little bracket thing. I'm we'll have to clip it in. Does it just clip in? I don't know. Yeah, I guess I don't really need that piece. Alright, oh well. So now that our CPU is installed, let's go get some RAM, a video card, and get this on the test bench now. Oh, and I guess also get a CMOS battery. Okay, so we got our board onto our test bench here. I found some RAM. This RAM was actually for another project. These were two 128 megabyte sticks. I don't know if that's too much or too little RAM for this system, but it's the RAM I had lying around, so it should be fine. But we did, or I did run into a couple of problems here. So, on this board, everything is so neatly labeled, like Right here it says battery next to the battery, it says power connector next to the power connector, it says slot A next to the CPU, all PCI slots are labeled, the ADP slot is labeled, so I figured even the front panel connectors would be labeled, but they are not. So I do not know where the power button on this system goes, so I do not know how to actually turn it on once we get it all plugged in. 
I guess I can look that up, but we have a different problem. So here I have an ADP graphics card since this slot is labeled as ADP. This is, uh, what it says, but it's a Radeon HD something. Oh, there it is. I did label it myself. If it camera will focus on my label, it says this is a Radeon HD 4670, but it does not fit in the ADP slot. I wonder if this has to do with, like, voltages on the ADP slot or something. So, as you can see, the connector is the same width, but the notch on my car does not match the notch on the socket. So I think that means that I need a different type of ADP card to get this to work. I may have another ADP card somewhere, but I don't know if it would fit in this socket or if it's the same as this. I guess what I could do is I found this video card out of an old Windows 95 machine. This is a PCI video card. I don't see where that wouldn't work in this. I mean, maybe there wouldn't be drivers for it for Windows or, you know, it might not be as powerful as an ADP card, but at the very least with this card, I imagine the computer would at least be able to post and give me a picture. But obviously before we do any of that, we have to figure out how exactly they make this turn on, figure out where the power button and everything else goes. And maybe I'll see if I have a proper ATP card that will fit in here. Okay, so I figured my problem out with the ATP port. This is an ATP port that supports 3.3 volt cards only. And the card that I have is an ATP 1.5 volt card. So they're not compatible. So I need another ATP card that works in this slot. So I guess for now I can use this PCI video card. But I still don't know where the power button is on here. Like... I don't want to just guess and start plugging this into random spots and it doesn't work. So, I don't know if I can even turn this on right now. Luckily, this doesn't use some weird, like, proprietary power connector like some OEM boards do. This uses a standard ATX, except it uses 20 pin, not 20 plus 4. So we need to get the plus 4 off of there. So I could plug in 20 pin ATX in there. So this should work as long as I could figure out how to power it on. Okay, something really weird has been going on with this system here. So I plugged in the ATX power connector and I plugged in the power supply and I just figured I would turn the power supply on and see what happens. And as soon as I do, the CPU fan starts spinning. And I noticed the numlock light on the keyboard is on, so it seems like the machine is booting even without a power button. I guess just as soon as it gets power, it just powers on. So if we just wait a little bit, hopefully we hear something happen. I was messing with it off camera, and I got it to boot. So, hopefully it does it again while I'm actually filming now. There we go. Now it's actually booting. Gateway, and you see we have an AMD Athlon 750. It says CMOS settings wrong, CMOS display type wrong, and press escape to run setup. So, currently just flipping on the switch on the power supply just makes this thing turn on. That's really friggin' weird. Alright, now I guess let's go into the bio setup and see what it says here. Okay, obviously it doesn't know what the date is. It is... February... February... What? 52020. Enter. There. Happy. Floppy options, none, 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 mouse install, cool, 256 megs of RAM, sees our Athlon, and like I said, it sees it as a 750 megahertz Athlon, which is what the seller claimed. USB legacy keyboard support, but our USB keyboard is working, so that's fine. 
The system does have two serial ports. Apparently only one is enabled here. That's fine. We have some other settings and things here. Passwords and... Alright, whatever. Sure. Let's see what happens now. Boots up again. And... Okay, yeah. It's trying to boot into a floppy, which there obviously isn't one. I guess I can try to boot this into something, into DOS, and just see what happens. Okay, well I just grabbed a floppy drive that I had lying around, plugged it on in. Now let's try to boot up again and see if I can get it to boot off of the floppy drive. And let's actually hope it boots again. I flip the switch and power supply is on. Power supply fan, fan is spinning. The CPU fan is spinning. So hopefully it powers up. The first time I did get this power up it did take this long to boot. It took a long time to boot. I don't even know how long. I did cut a bunch of that out in the video because it took a while. I didn't want to just sit here and stare at it while it tries to boot. So hopefully it does. Hopefully I don't need to like clear the CMOS or something to get it to boot or do something weird here. I don't, I don't actually know what's going on. So I'm just gonna wait. Okay, after some messing around off camera, I got the machine to boot again. For some reason it just didn't like my other video card, so putting in a different video card and it works now it's gonna give me the CMOS settings wrong and all that crap wrong again because I took the CMOS battery out hoping that was the problem but I guess it wasn't so I guess let's go through the settings again and just see if we can get it to work now February 5th 2020 floppy options. Good. Sees our floppy drive that I put in there. Hopefully should be able to boot off of it. Well, let's boot off the CD-ROM first, so let's switch that to... Uh, Alright, well, I guess it'll skip the CD-ROM and then go to floppy. I guess that's fine. Uh, guess this is all fine. I don't want to change everything. I just want to see if it works. Let's take a floppy disk in. I hear it trying to boot up the floppy, so that's good. Let's see what happens. Alright. Boot failure, instant boot disk in A. Press any key. Um, I'm pressing any key. I'm pressing a bunch of keys on the keyboard, and nothing is happening. That is strange. Um, though right now I am using a USB keyboard. So I'm going to get a PS2 keyboard, plug that in, and see if that works. Okay, so I think a keyboard problem was actually the fact that the KVM I have attached to both this computer and my capture machine sort of glitched out a bit. But anyway, so I grabbed a PS2 keyboard. This actually happens to be a gateway keyboard. I just happened to find this at a thrift store somewhere. So let's power it on up again. Alright, that's a good sign. Non system disk. What do you mean? It's a, it's a DOS boot disk. I don't like about it. Guess I can try another DOS boot disk. Don't know why it doesn't like that one. Okay, so I was messing with the machine and. Maybe there's something wrong with this floppy drive, or something wrong with the floppy controller, because as you can see it says drive not ready, drive not ready, boot failure. Eventually it says free DOS, and that's the disk that's in the floppy drive that hopefully will boot. Sounds like it's trying to. So, 
There could be something wrong with this machine. There could be something wrong with this floppy drive. I'm not sure. Anyway, I do know that this board seems to work, sort of. It's also really weird that the board just sort of boots up whenever it has power. I wonder how that worked in its original case. I guess there was some sort of power button that you would connect to the front panel connector that would toggle it on and off, or maybe it was one of those computers where you would do like a key combination, it would be like a special button on the keyboard that would turn it on and off. I'm not really sure. So what I am sure about is that this isn't booting, so I don't know how much I can really do with this anymore, but hey, I guess it was just fun to sort of see what this motherboard that I randomly found at Savers can do. The Ethelon 750 does seem to work, and if I can figure out how to plug this into a case properly... Oh shit! Oh wait, 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 okay, so, looks like it actually booted up into, uh, into Fritos. I don't know, I don't know why it took so long, but it, uh, it worked. I load DOS into high memory, and load the memory manager here from Fritos, and, uh, see if we can get into a DOS prompt. Crap, should I try not have load, loaded high mem? Is that bad? I mean, there's 256 megs of RAM. Should be able to to run high mem, right? Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Do, do something. No. So, looking through some of the BIOS options here, I think I may have figured out why it turns on when I turn the power supply on. So auto start here, previous state, or remain off, so I think that auto start is why this machine is booting at all. So I'm not going to change that, because otherwise I don't know if I could get it to uh, start up again anymore. So let's just uh, try again. Another floppy drive. Okay, now it boots right into FreeDOS without um, yelling at me a bunch of times. This may take a while to load again, like before, so uh, I'm gonna cut the video and hopefully this will actually boot. Okay, so it wasn't booting off of floppy for some reason, but I do have a CD that missed DOS on it, so I actually attached a CD-ROM drive here. So we're going to try to boot off of a CD and see what happens. I mean, why not, right? Sure didn't hurt. Alright, so I have it plugged in with a CD-ROM drive here, but it doesn't seem to be booting anymore. I'm not sure why. I wonder if there is something wrong with this motherboard. Like, is there got to be a reason this random gateway board was in this A-bit box? Like, Maybe there is something wrong with it, because I know for a fact this CD ROM drive works, and I'm pretty sure this floppy drive works. I mean, I keep it around for testing, so I'm positive it works, so there's got to be something wrong with this board. I mean, I could try to boot off of USB or something, but for now I might just uh, might just leave it and try to worry about it later. Or just, you know, not forget about it, but like, deal with it later if it doesn't want to boot now. So, I don't know. Okay, so I've uh, tried something else now. I've disconnected both the floppy drive and the CD-ROM drive, and I'm going to see if I can get this to boot off of a USB stick. I don't know if this machine can do that, but let's see if it can. Uh, don't know if it will work. Maybe I can't boot off USBs, and some of these seem to be... Hey, net boot. I should have... If I could find a PCI Ethernet card lying around and see if I can uh can net boot. That could be could be fun. Let's see, because I don't think it's working with the flash drive. No, if I had a hard drive I can boot off that, but I didn't seem to want to post the C D ROM drive plugged in and didn't want to boot off of the floppy drive, so yeah I guess I can just try to net boot. And they need to go find a network card. So, guess I'll go try to 
find a PCI network card. Get over my around. Okay, so I found a PCI network card. Hopefully this will work. A little overkill. It's a gigabit PCI Ethernet card, but let's see if it does anything. In case you're wondering, this thing is called a uh, a postcard. It gives me postcodes about what's wrong with the system. So that's why I was able to figure out like the video card was acting up and other things that are going on. But <sighs> looks like it's giving me errors here. I don't know if we can uh, net boot. Oh, I need to make sure I turn off the floppy drive in the BIOS since there isn't a floppy drive anymore. Alright. Let's just see what we can do here. Fan always on. No. That's a weird thing. Okay, I don't know. Uh, I'm just going through everything here. Um, I don't know. Looks like I should be able to put off network, right? Let's give it a shot. I see a green light on our Ethernet card, so maybe something will happen. Let's find out. Don't boot failure. And not net boot. I guess not. I mean, I do have a Pixie server set up in my house, so I should be able to net boot. And as you can see, the PCI devices, you can see the Ethernet card, so it works. So it should be able to boot off of it, but it's not. So I guess there's some work needs to be done into this machine. Uh, maybe I can get like a PCI controller to bypass the built-in floppy and IDE controllers. Maybe that's the problem, and a PCI card can just bypass that, or guess there's a whole lot I can try with this board, but I don't know how much I want to try of it right now. I just know that it posts and it sort of works, so I guess I also want to see if I can get a proper AGP card for this. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to stop this video here about this socket A motherboard. I know that I can put a CPU in and it works, and I guess that's as far as I can get now since it doesn't seem to want to boot off of floppy or CD or something. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, I think my floppy drive that I was using works. I know I've used that in other things. At least I'm pretty sure I have. So I wonder if I can try just to get like, like I said, maybe like a PCI controller that can do IDE and floppy and see that'll bypass the one built in and if that would work. Hopefully the BIOS could be able to see that. I don't need something like XT IDE because, you know, this is way past needing anything like that, but also in a thing like this, you don't think you would need a separate IDE controller either, so who knows. Again, I want to see if I can get a proper AGP card, because using a PCI video card in a system like this is kind of silly. And yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with a system like this. I mean, what, um, what operating system would you run on an AMD K7? like this. I think XP is probably too new, so maybe like Windows NT or Windows 2000. Um, I do have another machine set up, Pentium 4, that has Windows 2000, but I wonder if that machine would be more appropriate with like XP or something, then I use this as a 2000 machine, though. There are some things with this I need to figure out. One, I need to figure out how to get a power button on it. I'm pretty sure it's only powering on because of that BIOS setting that automatically powers it on when it was incorrectly powered off or something. So I'm afraid that if I do get this thing to boot properly and then I hit shut down or something, it would shut down and then like not turn back on again when I turn the power supply off and on. So I don't really know what to do with this thing. I don't know how to get it to work properly the way I want it. I'm going to need to do a lot more tests with it. But I guess it goes to show you that when you find something at a thrift store, you never know what you're going to find. So, anyway, I'm going to end this video here and let you know that if you want to support me on Patreon, find a link in the description, and thanks.